horse and that's what it is. Most of it's horse and I've been trying to scrape, scrape it off my shoes. That was then Attorney General Mark Burnovich speaking on 60 Minutes just nine days before the 2022 midterm elections. It was the very first time the state's top law enforcement officer had publicly dismissed election fraud claims by fellow Republicans, let alone describe them as horse blank. We've now learned that Burnovich was told months before by his own investigators that the vast majority of the claims were horse blank. But Brnovich never told us. What was Mark Brnovich thinking? What was the cost of his silence? And what comes next? Our political insiders join us now, both attorneys, Republican Christine Jones, former candidate for Arizona governor, and Democrat Chris Love, board member at Planned Parenthood Action. Welcome back to Square Off. Good morning. Uh, before we get going, I want to give full credit to the Washington Post, uh, which was first to report on what Bernovich's investigators told him. That was based on a public records request from Bernovich's successor, Democrat Chris Mays. So many questions. I want to start with a, a big one because I think it's important to get this across. What was the cost of Brnovich's silence, the human impact of letting these election fraud claims linger, persist for months? Christine? Well, you could, you, it runs the spectrum, right? You could say it's anything from nothing to death threats and people who were living in fear and our county elected officials wondering if somebody was going to be standing outside their door when they left to go to work in the morning. The human cost was significant and unfortunately, then Attorney General Brnovich decided that that was worth it to help advance maybe his career or his power or his standing in the party to help a Republican get elected. Not really sure, but it was significant, Bram. And I'm, I'm embarrassed as a Republican to, to be taking that side because it's, it's unfortunate that this happened. Embarrassed, really? It's really embarrassing because if you know something, particularly as an attorney, you have a, an ethical obligation to disclose and you don't do it, it's not just a a bar complaint, right? It's not just a violation of the ethical rules. I think there's a moral issue there. And you know, public officials are held to a higher standard. So to me, as a person who's kind of a nerdy rule follower, it's embarrassing. Uh, also, the loss of trust in the election itself and the whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a strange way, I wonder if you think about this, Republicans animated by these election fraud claims, animated by Donald Trump repeating the lies, it cost them the election, didn't it? Absolutely. I think that you've seen that uh, middle of the road Republicans were done with this narrative about 2020. But also, I think that these uh, these lies that were perpetuated by uh, folks, the big lie, um, impacted the number of Republicans that actually showed up on Election Day because they lost trust in our election system. Yeah. So I haven't been able to reach Brnovich for comment and statements to other media outlets. He defended his record on election related matters, but hasn't explained why he never disclosed his investigators findings. Christine, you kind of touched on this. Was just a, this just a political decision on his part because he was running for the U.S. Senate? It sure feels like it. I mean, again, a spectrum, right? You could say there was ongoing questions because some of the investigations didn't get to bedrock, right? They didn't get to an actual outcome. But we now know of the over 600 complaints, you know, they investigated 422 were sent down for criminal charges. So you had to know something. You had to know some answer. So the only conclusion we can come to, and less than until Mark Brnovich comes out and disabuses us of the notion, is he was playing a political game. Now the question that's disturbed many lawyers, you, you touched on it. As an officer of the court, Mark Brnovich was bound by a code of professional conduct. Wasn't he to disclose what he knew? Or because he's a politician, does he get a pass? Oh, absolutely not. He's a politician, but he is still a lawyer first and, you know, are basically our chief lawyer for the state. And if he had been paying as much attention to his ethical duties as he was to making nunchuck videos, we would be having a really different conversation, possibly without two now bar charges and maybe more to come. Yeah, I was going to mention that. The Yellow Sheet reports two bar charges have been filed against Brnovich. To be clear, bar charges be would become bar formal, bar complaints mm -hmm. after investigation. So uh, there's a process there that needs to play out. Is his bar license in jeopardy, do you think? 
I think as, as attorneys, we have to be very careful mm -hmm. about making a conclusion on that because there is a process and the, the complaint gets made. There's a committee from the bar that does the investigation. So I'm not gonna go as far as Adrian Fontes and say, yes, disbar him, it's all over. Mm -hmm. But it is appropriate to be reported there's an ethical rule that says you can't be dishonest, you can't engage in fraud, and if you do, you're subject to discipline up to and including disbarment. So it'll be interesting to see how the bar proceeds with this. And, you know, we now know based on the Andy Thomas stuff and the mm -hmm. Sheriff Joe stuff that they are inclined to take away cards from people who are public officials if they misbehave badly enough. Boy, this mm -hmm. took me back. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right. Exactly. exactly right. Exactly right. To that. Exactly. Um, I should note that Bernovich narrowly avoided discipline right. a year ago mm -hmm. in a state-related matter. He got into a diversion program. Um, a terrible look for an attorney general. Uh, Mark Bernovich, Bernovich, though, the document show, wasn't the only lawyer who saw this in that office. One of those documents was sent directly to his chief of staff. Are they in perhaps some jeopardy when it comes to their bar licenses? Possibly. I think that there may be grounds for folks to file bar charges as well because they still have the same duty that Mark Brnovich had as licensed attorneys in Arizona. Um, they concealed information that was very important to the public. And so I wouldn't be surprised if some of the groups that are also making these charges against Brnovich also include some of his staffers in this as well. Let's end this segment with a counterfactual. What if all those reports had been invest, uh, been released in March, in April, and then in September. Would that have changed anything? Well, I think to Chris's point, it may have brought back in some of the moderates who were just sick of hearing about it. But I can tell you, even as recently as yesterday, I still know people who have a deeply held belief that there was fraud. It doesn't matter what you put on a piece of paper, they will still believe it. And they're still gonna talk about it despite my urgings to the contrary, they will be talking about this in perpetuity. Many, many people, we saw, there was a hearing just this past week at the Capitol, Wendy Rogers presided over it. Wendy Rogers, who would not speak right. to the investigators about her claims. Why wouldn't she speak to them? Because she knows they're baloney, right? And I think that, you know, there's a lack of political courage there with Wendy Rogers, but of course she's made a lot of money um, a lot of campaign donations based on her per per perpetuating the big lie. So she's invested in not telling the truth here. Not just invested, but she knows she faces legal jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I thought that was a very interesting point in the report that said when the investigators went to public officials and said, hey, by the way, when you talk to me, I'm a law enforcement officer, and if you lie to me, you can be held responsible, they clammed up. And that should tell people, and I would say to Republicans, pay attention to that because if they had evidence they would have turned it over okay gotta end it there thanks for watching our youtube channel follow arizona's top stories and breaking news by downloading the 12 news app and subscribing to the 12 news youtube channel